today. My name's John and I work for a company called Hot House Music. And we're here today to tell you about all of the amazing instruments you could learn with a Hot House teacher at your school. This is super exciting. And in fact, I've brought some friends with me today who are going to demonstrate all of those musical instruments that you can learn. Now, who plays a musical instrument already? Wow, that's amazing. Now, I started off my musical journey by playing the trumpet, and I'm going to show you that in the next second or two. And before I show you the trumpet, though, I want to see whether you've got a really agile mind. So we do some exercises at Hot House to see whether you've got this very flexible mind. Now, I'd like you to show me your fingers, please. Very good. Now, I'd like to wiggle your fingers like this. Teachers, you can do this as well. Very nice. Now to play the trumpet, you have to have a very good control of your fine motor skills. And these are your little fingers. So I'd like to see is, I'd like to touch your pinky tips together. Very good. Now your thumbs. When I count to four, I'd like to touch your thumb and pinky. One, two, three, four. Very good, I like it. I can see you're gifted already. If you want to play bigger instruments, like my friends are going to demonstrate, you'll need to be able to control your gross motor skills. These are your big actions. So I'd like you to make a circle with your right hand, left hand if you prefer, and then I'd like to go the same way with the other hand. Teachers, yet again, you can do this too. And let's go opposite ways. Wow. Very good. Try and do it with a square. So we go both ways with a square. Ah, opposite ways. Wow, not bad. The last bit of brain gym before I demonstrate the trumpet. I'd like you to make a circle that goes away from you and one that goes towards you and then one which goes at the same time. Very good. Look at that. For those that are struggling with the circle, you could do it as a square. Start at the top, one goes away, one comes towards. Go down, cross over, up, cross over and down. These are all really useful skills that you'll need when you learn a musical instrument. Right, da -da! and as if by magic, my trumpet appears. Now I started learning the trumpet when I was only five years old. And the trumpet comes from a family of instruments called the brass family. In this family, you'll see today the trumpet, but also the trombone, which I think my good friend over there might be getting ready if I can hear a sound. instrument or the brass family they all have one of these and this is called a mouthpiece and this is what translates the sound that I make with my lips into a duck like sound if you can make a sound on the mouthpiece you will then be able to make a sound on the trumpet and it's very simple. We do the same sound and the trumpet amplifies that. Now you might want to put your fingers in your ears because this can be very loud. <gasps> Ooh, I like that a lot. Now my trumpet, it has three vowels. And to play the trumpet, you need to remember different combinations of those vowels to change the pitch of the note. A little bit different from the trombone, and you'll see that next. Here we go. If I press them like this, you'll see the sound goes down. If I don't press them down all the way, the sound can go squidgy. So we really do need to try and play this properly. Now the trumpet is used in lots of famous music all the way around the world, from I wonder what that song was. Any answers? Very good, but also it's used in very famous films. I really 
really like the trumpet because it helps me express how excited I am on the start of the day. And that's just one of the instruments from the brass family. So I'm going to invite onto the stage now to demonstrate the next one, a good friend of mine called Mr. Southgate, and he's going to play the trombone. Give him a round of applause, please. Over to you, Mr. Southgate. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you all for your very kind welcome. You can stop clapping now. My name is Mr. Southgate, and I'm going to show you all about this instrument called a trombone. But before I do that, wow, that was loud, John. I've heard jet engines quieter than that. Now, this instrument, the trombone, is in the brass family too. And just like the trumpet, it has a mouthpiece, but the mouthpiece is a little bit larger that I buzz into. It has a bell, and it also has this thing called a slide. And a slide is there instead of the vowels that you might have seen John demonstrating before. And what they do is they help me to change the sound of the instrument from higher to lower. The further out it goes, the lower the sound. And the trombone is a really versatile and fun, brilliant instrument. And it can be used in loads and loads of different contexts. My personal favourite is like as a bouncing, walking bass. What I want to show you today is all about a couple of special noises you can make through the instrument. The first is growling. Do any of you know how to growl? Try it now. <laughs> Teachers, you might want to pause the video whilst waiting for them to stop. Now, if I growl through the instrument, it makes a really interesting and cool sound. Let's see. And the second effect that we want to try is something got a funny name. A little bit like the flapping arms of a butterfly. It's called flutter tonguing. And how we do it is we roll our arms. I'm sure all of you can try that too. And on the instrument, it sounds just like this. How really, really fun. Hmm, I wonder what the next instrument that we're going to demonstrate is. Tom! Tom! Come here quick! Come here quick! It's time for the guitar! What? You don't have your own guitar. You want to use mine? Okay, fair enough. Here you go. No snatching, Tom! Please! Neil, let go! Neil, let go! Oh. Cheers, Neil. Oh. Hi everyone, my name is Tom and I play the guitar. So the guitar is a super cool instrument that has one, two, three, four, five, six strings. Now the guitar is a really cool instrument because you can play more than one note at once. And when you do this, that's called a chord. A chord sounds like this. See, on other instruments you can only play individual notes, so that makes the guitar really, really cool. You might notice that there's some gaps going up the neck of the guitar, and these are called frets. This is where you put your finger to play a note. So each gap or fret is a different note. Now you can also get a different kind of guitar. This one is called an acoustic because there's no electrical parts to it. However, you can have an electric guitar. This is one that you plug in to an amplifier. Now, if you don't know what an amplifier is, here's one here. They're a big heavy speaker that makes your guitar sound super loud and super cool. So let's hear that. Oh, 
on an amplifier you can have loads of different effects. Ones that just sound normal like this, like a normal acoustic guitar. Or you can go crazy. Why would you not want to play guitar? But there is a different kind of guitar called a bass guitar. Now, I've got a friend who's really, really super good at bass and she's going to show you all about it. Macy, do you want to turn this electric guitar into a bass guitar? Here you go. Thank you, Tom. So this is a bass guitar. Bass guitar is a little bit different to the acoustic and electric guitar. For example, it only has four strings and also it's a lot bigger, so it's a lot lower. The bass provides the bass lines for the songs, which is normally why a song is so recognisable because of its bass line. For example, Billie Jean or Another one bites the dust. Very recognisable songs because of their bass lines. One reason why I love the bass so much is because it can do so many things and it has so many techniques. So there's normal finger style or you can have slap and pop. Which is also one of my favourite techniques. The bass also can do different types of bass line depending on the genre of the song. For example, blues or swing. heavy metal, rock kind of bass line. And also, but very rarely, a bass can play chords. Because it never normally does, when a bass does play chords, it, is, it sounds really cool. And that is the bass, another member of the guitar family. And another member of the guitar family is a ukulele. But I think Alison wants to tell you a bit about that. So I'm going to chuck it. Oh, I almost dropped that there. Thank you, Macy. But that's not how you chuck a ukulele. This is how you chuck a ukulele. Now, our ukulele here, you will notice, is much, much smaller than a guitar. That means it's really good for little fingers. So if you're in your a year group that's quite small, say year one or year two, you can still play a ukulele, okay? So you will see here, it has how many strings? Let's count together. One, two, three, four strings, okay? So a guitar has six, a ukulele has four. It's got some little dots like a guitar and it's got some frets like a guitar, but it's just much smaller, okay? And it can be used for playing little tunes, so you can still pluck it. Or you can strum it. Lots of people do our island strum. So, you might want to have a little look at this. I do some instructional videos on our YouTube channel already. So, we already have our beginners ukulele. So, if you want to know more, you can always have a look there. Our next instrument, though, that I'm going to show you is one of my main instruments I play. It is this one. Can anybody guess what this instrument is? It's made of wood and we breathe down it. Gives you a clue it's a woodwind instrument. It is called a clarinet. So if you've guessed a clarinet, fabulous. Well done. Now, what makes a clarinet work properly is using this on the top of it. So I'm just going to show you here. Can anybody know what this is called? It's really super thin. And it's called a reed. Now, what happens with a reed is I'm going to put it onto my clarinet and the very thin bit of wood on top vibrates and then it helps me create a sound. Now the clarinet, it's not very loud, it's very soft, but it can do lots of different things. So I'm just going to play some low notes on my clarinet. It can also go really high. for doing a 
particular piece of music. If you know this film, you might recognise it. Any guesses? Very magical. If you guessed Harry Potter, you are correct. Yes, this is Hedwig's theme. And the reason they picked the clarinet is because it's got that woody sound. It's like the owl going through the forest. Right, so that is our clarinet. But there's other instruments in our woodwind family apart from the clarinet. So now I'm going to hand you over to my wonderful friend, Tim, who is going to show you this instrument. OK, here you go, Tim. Wow, thank you Alison for that wonderful introduction to the ukulele and clarinet. Now like Alison said, this is a flute. And the flute, like the clarinet, is from the woodwind family. But unlike the clarinet, there are a few differences. First off, it's made out of silver and not wood. And the second difference is that unlike the clarinet and the saxophone, which you'll see in a minute, you don't have a reed to make the sound. You have to blow across the top of this hole on the flute. And you do that a bit like you would a Coca-Cola bottle. Now, because the flute is really small, it's really quiet, which makes it good to practice if you have lots of neighbours. And the second thing, because it's small, it makes a very high sound. Like this. Now, like the clarinet and other woodwind instruments, it has keys. And these keys help us change the sound. So if I add my fingers, I can make the sound go down. If I take my fingers off, I can make the sound go back up again. With a little bit of practice and only three notes, you can play your very first song. Let's see if you can recognise it. Did you get it? Now you can play all sorts of music on a flute and if you try really hard, you can do really good things with it. Now, my very special friend, Mac, is going to show you another instrument from the Woodwind family. And it's the saxophone. Take it away, Mac. Thanks, Tim. So like Tim said, this is a saxophone. And it's a woodwind instrument, like the flute and the clarinet. You play it using a reed, like this. And when you blow down it, it vibrates against the mouthpiece. The great thing about the saxophone is that you can play really, really high or really, really low. Ready? Like this or... Or really, really low. Ready? The thing is with saxophones is the smaller they are, the higher they sound, and the bigger they are, the lower they sound. And this is an alto, so it's right about in the middle. So you can't play too high, but you also can't play too low. And with a saxophone, you can also play really, 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 really loud, and really, 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 really quiet. So I'm going to play you a piece that's famous on the alto, and I want you to see if you can guess what it is. Ready? Let's go. Richard, 
and see if he can explain to you all about the tenor. Wow, what a fantastic introduction to the saxophone. Thank you so much, Mac. So I hope you all liked what she said about the alto. And what we have coming up for you now is the tenor saxophone. So as you can see, the tenor saxophone is a little bit bigger than the alto saxophone. So I like to call it the daddy saxophone. And remember what we said about instruments, the bigger they are, the deeper they get. So whereas the alto, because it's quite small, it's quite high pitched, the tenor saxophone goes really low. And just like the other woodwind instruments, as I add my fingers on, the sound goes down. Take my fingers off and the notes go back up. Now, the reason why the saxophone is so good is because we can play so many different songs. Now, if you're like me, your favourite thing in the world will be to play some Disney songs. So let's see if you can guess what this one is. Let it go from Frozen. Or maybe you like to play some theme songs like the Match of the Day theme. These are some of my favourite things to do and you can do all of those on the saxophone. So whether that be the alto saxophone or the tenor saxophone or maybe I think John might have a big surprise for us coming up next. Let's see what he's got. Wow, that looks so cool. I'm going to have to just go reach out to get my Barry Sachs. It's so big. I'll be back in two. Oh, wow. Look at the size of that. Can you see all the way down? Now, because it's a bigger instrument, like all of the other instruments, it has a deeper sound. It still has a mouthpiece. And it still has a reed to create that sound. And when I blow through, if I add my fingers, the sound will go much lower. Now, if I take a big breath, this is what it sounds like. Today he's going to demonstrate the drums. A round of applause please for Mr. Stuart McCrone. Oh! Thanks John. Well, like John said, I'm going to show you the drums now, okay? And the drums is a really cool instrument because it's an instrument that you have to be able to do lots of different things at the same time. So you've got to be able to use both hands and both feet. The first thing we start off in drums is by doing single strokes. And this on this drum here, the snare drum, and we do that by going right, left, right, left. And then if we do double strokes, so that's two on each hand, right, right, left, left. Okay, and if we put the snare drum on, we can do the single strokes, but doing it round the drum kit. Sounds a bit like a drum fill. Or we can do the double strokes really fast and it sounds like a drum roll. Which is super cool. We then have to add in our feet, okay? And our right foot is on this drum here, the biggest drum, and this is called the bass drum. And that makes that nice boomy sound. Our left foot 
is on this thing here. And this is called a hi-hat. And we open and close our hi-hat with our left foot. If we put our hands and our feet together, we can play things like a simple rock beat. Or we can do things a little bit heavier, like a heavy metal or heavy rock beat. Or maybe we could try some jazz, something a little bit quieter. Or maybe something from the Caribbean and do a little bit of reggae. Yeah! yeah. 